managing soil and land the air water and soil are our most important resources rapid population growth industrialization and urbanization are the main factors that put a strain on the natural resources conservation does not mean that we should not use them it means use of natural resources rationally and equitably keeping in mind their respectability without degrading them in other words it means wise sustainable use of them soil supports the growth of plants which give us food it also provides us with other basic requirements of life that is clothing shelter medicines etc hence soil is one of the most important life supporting resource soil erosion it is the removal of the top soil which is fertile layer of the soil due to agents like rain wind human activities like deforestation wrong agricultural practices developmental activities etc let us have a look at the soil profile a horizon is a layer of soil which had different characteristics from the layer above and beneath it is differentiated on the basis of physical feature texture and color now layer o which is the topmost layer this horizon consists of organic matter it has lot of leaf litter next is layer a this horizon is the mineral layer with the most organic matter and soil life this is the top layer also known as the fertile layer horizon b which is the subsoil layer with maximum of iron and clay next is the bottom most layer which is horizon c consist of large unbroken rocks during the erosion the o and a horizon are worn out or removed causes of soil erosion human activities that cause soil erosion and the second is natural activities or natural causes for soil erosion now coming to the human activities first is deforestation the roots of the trees hold and bind the soil it also helps the soil in absorbing rain water as the water percolates through the sides of the roots thus when the trees are cut down the soil becomes loose and exposed to erosion by agents like water and wind now second cause is overgrazing the cattle graze on the piece of land repeatedly uprooting or eating away even the roots the grasses have no scope to regenerate rendering the land to become completely denuded the soil is thus susceptible to erosion by water and wind third cause wrong agricultural practices these includes injudicious use of inputs like water fertilizers pesticides etc which renders the soil unfertile which support no vegetation farming on unsuitable terrains and soil compaction by agricultural machineries also make the top soil vulnerable to erosion next cause is overuse of land for growing crops the growing population needs more food to satisfy the hunger of the people the growing demand of food leads to intensive farming the soil gets exhausted of all its nutrients after few years and eventually does not support any vegetation this may lead to soil erosion next method is use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides in large quantities and for a long period of time degrade the soil quality making it unfit for vegetation next reason is improper land use and mining activities without land reclamation or afforestation also can account for soil erosion second category of natural causes for soil erosion are torrential rains loosen and remove the soil particles by the impact raindrop splash it creates a small crater in the soil ejecting soil particles run off when the rate of rainfall exceeds the rate of absorption of the water by soil the water flows adds surface run off carrying 
with it loosen soil particles gully erosion is when soil is washed away by the fast flowing rain water on the hill slope cutting deep channels wave action this can also be called shoreline erosion which occurs due to the action of waves during changing tides movement of snow or glaciers causes erosion of soil underneath by abrasion plucking and ice thrusting movement of rivers cause bank erosion carrying the soil particles downstream meandering or changing of the course of the river also cause erosion flood cause soil erosion when large volume of water flow rapidly movement of winds cause soil erosion mostly in arid and semi arid region where the soil particles are already dry and loose the wind carries away these loose particles leading to soil erosion effects of soil erosion the effects of soil erosion can be enumerated as follows when the top fertile layer is removed there is loss of fertility of soil thus affecting the emergence growth and yield of the crop textural change affect the water holding capacity of the soil making it susceptible to drought soil carried away by rain or wind end up in drains streams river canals irrigation and hydroelectric reservoir this may reduce irrigation electricity generation and the navigation of waterways the silting of the water bodies is one of the reason for flood because the floor of the water body rises due to the deposition of soil it is able to contain less water now and may lead to floods during heavy rains generation of wasteland and desertification the soil supports a large species of insects earthworms worms snakes microorganisms soil erosion means a loss of habitat for them many of them die and perish leading to loss of biodiversity now coming to the erosion control techniques first is terrace farming this is practiced in hilly region to prevent soil erosion during the farming processes fields are cut at right angles to the slope and agriculture is carried on the flat surface this type of land scraping is called terracing the rice terrace of the philippine have been designed as unesco world heritage site because of the significance of this technique advantages of terrace farming reduces soil erosion minimizes the chances of landslide in hilly region reduces surface runoff reduces wastage of irrigation water second method is contour farming this is the practice of tilling sloped land along lines of elevation in order to conserve rain water and to reduce soil loses from surface erosion these objectives are achieved by means of furrows crop rows and wheel tracks across slopes this structural arrangement act as reservoir to catch and retain rain water thus permitting increased infiltration and more uniform distribution of the water contour farming has been practiced for centuries in parts of the world where irrigation farming is important advantages of contour farming it has proved to reduce fertilizer loss it reduces power and time consumption also reduces wear and tear on machines it increase crop yield reduce erosion and reduces surface runoff now the next method is dry farming this is a type of farming practiced in arid and semi arid areas without irrigation by planting drought resistant crops and maintaining a fine surface tilth or mulch that protects the natural moisture of the soil from evaporation the choice of crop is influenced by the timing of the predominant rainfall for example winter wheat is more suited to region with higher winter rainfall while areas with wet summer may be more suitable for growing summer crops such as sorghum sunflowers or cotton 
एडवांटेजेस ऑफ ड्राई फार्मिंग इट इज़ सूटेबल फॉर प्लेसेज विद लो एनुअल प्रेसिपिटेशन इट ऑल्सो प्रोटेक्ट द सॉइल फ्रॉम इरोजन एंड रिटेन्स सॉइल मॉइस्चर नो नेक्स्ट मेथड इज ट्री प्लांटिंग इट रिफर्स टू द प्रोसेस ऑफ ट्रांसप्लांटिंग ट्री सीडलिंग्स जनरली फॉर फॉरेस्ट्री लैंड रिक्लेमेशन और लैंडस्केपिंग पर्पसेज इट इन्वॉल्व प्लांटिंग सीडलिंग्स ओवर एन एरिया ऑफ लैंड वेयर द फॉरेस्ट हैज बीन हार्वेस्टेड और डैमेज बाय फायर और डिजीजेज Tree planting is carried out in many different parts of the world, and strategies may differ widely across nation and regions, and among individual reforestation companies. Tree planting creates instant forest. Advantages of tree planting: It reduces soil erosion as the roots hold and bind the soil. It reduces the runoff of surface water, also reduces pollution. It increases the biomass content of the soil. absorbs carbon dioxide which is greenhouse gas and thus helps in reducing global warming one acre of tree can uh, remove up to 2.6 tons of carbon dioxide each year provides life essential oxygen and every size tree creates sufficient oxygen in one year to provide oxygen for family of four and natural habitat for wild flora and fauna next method is bunts Bunts are small earthen barriers provided in agricultural land with slopes ranging from one to six percent. It is a common technique to collect rainwater where it falls, increases water infiltration, and prevents soil erosion. Bunts are made of stone or soil, or sometimes even crop remains. The number of bunts and the distance between them depends on the slope and the soil type. Advantages of bunts. by building the bunts along the contour line the runoff reduces leads to increase water infiltration enhance soil moisture it also reduces soil erosion now next method is gullies a deep ditch or channel cut in the earth by running water after a prolonged downpour gully formation increases the water flow rate substantially which causes the significant deep cutting action into soil causing soil erosion the same concept of gullies can be used in agriculture where gullies can be dug which would be used for irrigation and channelize rain water it can be used as an advantage to reduce soil erosion by rain water and the next method is wind wind breaks a wind break or a shelter belt is a plantation usually made up of one or more rows of trees or shrubs planted at right angle to the prevailing wind they provide shelter from the wind and to protect soil from erosion usually they consist of alternate rows of trees and shrubs which reduce the velocity of the prevailing wind they are also planted along the edges of fields or farms wind breaks around a home can reduce the cost of heating and cooling and save energy other benefits include providing habitat for wildlife use of organic fertilizer these are natural fertilizers derived from dead plant or animal matter these are manure or compost made by decomposing the waste with the help of microorganisms The farmers often use cow dung, agric- agricultural residue, compost, etc., that are easily available on the farm. Advantages of organic fertilizer: It helps prevent soil er- erosion. Organic fertilizer increases physical and biological nutrient storage mechanism in soil. It helps to retain soil moisture. it is eco friendly and non polluting it also improves soil structure and it cost are low than the chemical fertilizer if it is locally available now next is soil management and soil conservation soil management refers to the process of adjusting soil factors in such a way that it ensures maximum crop production at the lowest cost soil conservation refers to the process of checking soil erosion by protecting the land surface from the impact of rainfall and wind by using cover crops like the grasses for example alfalfa 
and uh, leguminous crops. Increasing infiltration of rainwater by afforestation and improving soil structure. Decreasing the volume and velocity of overland flow. Reducing soil erosion by modifying physical and chemical properties of the soil. Soil conservation strategies. The major soil conservation strategies are land use management, then vegetative and mechanical practices. First is land use management. The first and foremost consideration in soil conservation is the land use within its capabilities. Land use can be mainly classified into cropland, partial land, woodland, wildlife and recreational land. A land suitable for single use when converted to another use becomes susceptible to erosion. For example, grasslands which provide soil cover if overgrazed by livestock become exposed to erosion. Land management is a process of managing uh, the use and development of land resources in the rural and urban areas. Soil and land use management is not only important for protecting the undervalued resources soil, but also critical to balance food production and food security with biomass production for energy and, and carbon sequestration and should be considered as an important option for water management. Vegetative and mechanical practices. The vegetative and mechanical practices of soil management include Indigenous practices like crop rotation, alternate cropping, windbreak, vegetative terraces, barrier to stiff stemmed grass, control sheet and rill erosion and trap sediment barriers to gully formation. Field borders of vegetation around field reduces the amount of sediment carried outside the field. Land reforms. The term land reform is used to discussing the various changes made in the cultivator's relation to land in a land tenure system. Land reforms in India broadly refers to abolition of intermediary tenures, tenancy reforms, sealing and land holding and distribution of surplus land, consolidation of holding and compilation and updating of land records. Land tenure system explains the traditional or legal rights individuals or group of individuals have on land and the social relationship among the rural population that uh, emerges from such land rights. Definition Land reform usually refers to redistribution of land from the rich to the poor. More broadly, it includes regulation of ownership, operation, leasing, sales and inheritance of land, indeed the redistribution of land itself requiring legal changes in an agrarian economy like India and great scarcity and an unequal distribution of land coupled with large masses of rural population below the poverty line. There are compelling economic and political arguments for land reforms. Not surprisingly, it uh, received top priority on the policy agenda at the time of independence. In the decades following independence, India passed a significant body of land reform legislation. Land policy in India has undergone broadly four phases since independence. First phase, the first and longest phase that is from 1950 to 1972 consisted of land reforms that uh, included three major efforts abolition of the intermediate tenancy reform and the redistribution of land using land sealing. The abolition of intermediaries was uh, relatively successful but uh, tenancy reform and land sealing met with less success. The second phase that is from 1972 to 85 shifted uh, attention to bringing uncultivated land under cultivation. The third phase that is from 1985 to 1995 increased attention towards water and soil conservation through the watershed development, drought prone area development that is DPAP and desert area development program that is DADP. A central government waste land development agency was established to focus on wasteland and degraded land. Some of the land policy from this phase 
continued beyond its final years the fourth and current phase of policy that is from 1995 onwards centers on debates about the necessity to continue with land legislation and efforts to improve land revenue administration and in particular clarity in land records next is integrated rural development that is irdp is a rural development program of the government of india launched in the year 1978 and extended throughout india by 1980 it is self employment program intended to raise the income generation capacity of the poor the target group consists largely a small and marginal farmers agricultural laborers and rural artisans living below the poverty line in the form of subsidy by the government and term credit by financial institutes the major objectives of the rural development program is to improve the economic condition of the rural poor this can be achieved by all round development and economic viability of agriculture horticulture livestock fisheries and sericulture following are some of the schemes undertaken under the irdp that is uh, training of rural youth for self employment that is trisem second scheme is for uh, rural artisan then development of women and children in rural area council for advancement of people action in rural technology jawahar rozgar yojana rural sanitation program national food for work program next is role of women in rural development rural women have many roles and responsibilities in rural development as farmers they plant weed and harvest crop many women earn extra money by working as daily wages laborers producing and selling vegetables and fruits or engaging in small scale trade and industries in developing countries like india they spend lot of time in fetching water and collecting fuel wood the entire community is benefited socially and economically if the women are empowered World Bank studies show that uh, many sub-Sahara African countries could increase their food production by 10 to 20 percent if women are empowered. Women should be encouraged financially with uh, micro-financing and saving schemes. Literacy of women is also an important aspect of the rural growth. A well-educated woman can look after the family better in terms of nutritional needs. health care hygiene family planning managing their own finances thus rural women are key agents for development they play a catalytic role towards achievement of transformational economic environmental and social changes required for sustainable development poverty eradication is key challenge for uh, rural women now community forestry Community forestry is a branch of forestry where the local communities play a significant role in forest management and land use decisions. It involves the participation of local communities, government and NGOs at time. India has developed its own models of community forestry in form of joint forest management, social forestry and agroforestry. the success of community forestry depends on the following aspects capability of land to support plantation villagers choice of land use and plantation nature of support by government and non government organization and local ecosystem next is social forestry it is conversion of waste land and common government land including planting of trees or pasture development on village common land road sites along railways and canal bridges railways and canal bridges into forest with the help of local people the local people have to say in um, deciding the type of plantation aims and advantages of social forestry it reduces the pressure on the forest for wood and other forest products 
caters to the need of local community for wood and uh, minor forest product it reduces poverty by providing employment to local people it also uh, take part in development of cottage industries with the availability of forest products utilization of land according to its productive capacity increases the forest cover by afforestation of wasteland and uh, unutilized common land aesthetic and landscape important stabilization of land by checking soil erosion and improvement of ecological conditions